join with computer audio, enlarge the screen. All right, eight basic questions here that you've had problems with in the past that I hope you put in your pocket as we go along. Uh, so we're gonna take the uh, cubic and we're gonna find the equation of line tangent to its point of inflection. And so therefore we have uh, uh, y prime, 6x squared plus 12x minus 5. That's going to assign slope of the tangent, slope of ELT. When we find the x value necessary, that's when the second derivative equals 0 and changes signs, which is 12x plus 12. That equals 0 and does change signs at x equals negative 1. So the equation of the tangent line is going to start with a parentheses of x plus 1. We're going to get rid of that. We're going to plug negative one into the position function to find out our where we are, the coordinate, the point. And so negative one is uh, minus two, then this should be positive six without looking. It's a three to one ratio. Negative one, yes it is, so we know that this is now correct. Uh, minus one times minus five is add another five, add four, and we now know that we're at 11, 15, minus two, 13. Okay. Uh, then we're going to find out the slope. The slope is this equation here. This assigns slope at an instant. So we got 6 minus 12. We like that because the points of inflection occur when the first derivative changes from negative to positive, changes from increasing to decreasing. So, you know, this is a parabola. That's the 2 to 1 ratio of the max or min. Uh, so that's what uh, we were looking for. So that's going to give me 6 minus, minus 6 minus 5 minus 11. So therefore, uh, there's your ELT. Now, if you want to check it, we can graph this very quickly just to see if everything seems to match up, although we know it does by the uh, three to one ratio and the two to one ratio opposites. But just for practice, y-intercept of four, going down at five to one, uh, and then got some concave up eventually. So we've got some, uh, uh, concave up, so we got some of that. So going back this way. So where's our point of inflection? That's minus five and then minus 11. Minus 11 would be a little bit further up in terms of the negative slopes. So that matches up with negative one. It's bigger than four. 13 is bigger than four, so that y value matches up. And that's the steepest moment that uh, this particular function has. Slopes here are positive, 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 then zero, going to a slope of minus 11 right there. And then they start to increase again, the slopes to minus 10 to minus, what, five, minus five at the y intercept. Uh, yeah, so, and another way of writing this function for graphing form would have been two X uh, plus one uh, Q minus 11. That's actually the same as that function and it gives us a chance to visualize it more easily. All right. Yep. All right. So that's one problem. We're going to do eight problems. So what's another one we can do? Something that uh, maybe is troublesome. So y equals, how about we do the secant uh, to the fifth of uh, minus x. And let's find y prime. Okay, this is one of those uh, composite functions. So you got f of g of h of x. That's what that is. You got three functions. You got something to the fifth, the secant of something, and then uh, minus one times x, rate of change in the parentheses. So take care of the fifth power first, which is five times something to the fourth. What is the something secant and minus x? So that takes care of that. We would rewrite it the way a textbook would, which puts the four there. Then we got the secant, and the derivative of secant is the secant of minus x, tangent of minus x, right? And then the derivative of minus x is minus one. I'll put the minus right there this time. All right, so that's the chain rule. So let's alternate between derivatives and integration. The inverse of taking a derivative is integrating. So let's integrate the fourth root of x cubed dx for practice. That's an indefinite integral, so it's got a plus c. I mean, we've got functions that look like this. 
right? All of these functions, pretty poor one there. All of those functions at this instant are going up at the same rate, right? But they're different by a constant. So first step is to rewrite this as x to the 3 fourths. So then we've got x to the 3 fourths plus 4 fourths divided by 3 fourths plus 4 fourths. 3 fourths plus 4 fourths is 7 fourths, which is what this is. Dividing by 7 fourths is the same thing as multiplying by 4 sevenths plus c. I think I've done three problems. Maybe I've done, yeah, I've done three. Five more to go. Five more to go. All right, so let's take y equals, let's do a product. Let's do e to the 4x times the tangent of 2x. Okay, and a product rule is all about length times width. So that's a w prime l, and this is an l prime w. Those are the layers, so we have a plus we're going to do the derivative of the first, which is 4e to the 4x. That's like saying that. Don't change the first one. If this is length times width, don't <laughs> do change it. So, so we'll call this the first one. That's our first factor. We just did that. All right, so forget what I said over here. All right, and then we don't change the width. So that's times tan 2x. Plus, then we're going to change this one. Uh, but I think what I'm, I've started to do is work with the first one here, work with the first one here. That's I'm changing my approach over the years. I've always done it in, in reverse order here, but I think keeping them derivative of the first times the second, leave the first alone times the derivative of the second. That sounds easier to me for folks who are struggling right now. So tan is secant squared, secant squared up 2x times 2. Okay, I believe that's the fourth one we've done. All right, fifth. Problem number five. Let's see, what can we do? Let's do a dy dx equals x squared plus 2x minus 5. And I know that y of 0 gets me 7. Okay, so I get an x value of 0 gets me 7, and we're trying to find what y is equal to. So we got to integrate. we got to change to that, right, and then integrate. Integration of dy gets me y plus c. Integration over here is going to get me something there plus c. We put our c's together. So I've got x to the 3 over 3. I've got x squared. I've got minus 5x plus c. And we know a 0 gets us a 7. 0, 0, 0 gets us a 7. We're done. I think that was our sixth problem. Two more. That's a differential equation. Let's see what else can we do. We can do, we can do a quotient rule. So let's do y equals, uh, how about uh, uh, 2x plus 1 to the third over um, 2, let's make it 5 to the x. Okay, so what's y prime? You got to know the jingle low, 5 to the x, times derivative of high. Oh, well, that's going to be a, you know, a something to the third. It's going to be a 3 to the 2 situation. So I've got 2x plus 1, 3 times that to the 2. But I also have an associated derivative rate of change of what's inside the parentheses, so I have to multiply times 2. So that's low d high minus high, good, the camera's good, high, which is 2x plus 1 to the third. You got to know the derivative of 5 to the x. ln of 5 times 5 to the x over low, low. 5 to the x squared is best written as 5 to the 2x. You multiply, right? Rules, algebraic rules. Okay, and multiply really means that you have 5 to the x times 5 to the x, which is 5 to the x plus x, right? You add exponents, there's your 2x. All right, I think that's seven. One more foundational problem. Yeah, let's take a look at the limit as x goes to seven of 
how about we do e to the x minus e to the seven over x minus seven? Hmm. A subtraction of two function values. That kind of reminds me of y2 minus y1. For the function e to the x, for all values x, I guess that's a seven and that's e to the seven. I see my numerator, that minus that. I see my denominator, x2 minus x1. This looks like it's measuring slope for some function at seven. What function? Oh, e to the x. Derivative e to the x at seven is e to the seven. It's a pretty big number, by the way. 2.71 times 2.71 times 2.71 times 2.71. I'm done. All right, so that's it. There's your practice for tonight. Hopefully you're picking something up as we go along.